Hello, thank you guys once again. Thank you for joining. Um, today I will be doing, um, this video will be covering the writings of the church fathers, the ones who affirmed um, the Reformation principle of sola scriptura. And um, okay, just before you say I'm quote mining and all that stuff, um, I'm not saying that these these early church fathers a Protestant. I'm not saying that um, they agreed with everything, with uh, everything that Protestants believe. I'm saying that um, they affirm principles of sola scriptura and other things. But today I'm going to be focusing on sola scriptura. So okay, before I go to that, I want to share some cool stuff I got. I bought this cool shirt um, from Rap Tunes. You want to take a look at that? It's pretty cool and funny. You have Martin Luther there, uh, Calvin, Knox, um, some others right there. <laughs> I think this is pretty cool. Um, go check out Rap Tunes. I, I follow them on um, on uh, Instagram. They have cool stuff. Also got some of these. They sent some cool uh, stickers. Pretty funny. Let me just show real quick. It's Calvin. This one was pretty cool. So it's Raf Tunes. Raf Tunes. So you can follow them on. I just saw that cool shirt and I was all like, yeah, I like it. Alright, so I'm just going to be reading a few, um, just a few quotes. I can't, I'm not going to go through everything. Augustine wrote a lot about that. There's so much stuff that he said and I'm just going to read maybe... One or two quotes from him. So let's get to it. Um, this is the early church father writings, the ultimate, um, affirming the ultimate authority of scripture, the principle of Sola Scriptura. So we have Cyril of Jerusalem in 318, um, 386, which he lived. Um, it says, Have thou ever in thy mind this seal? which for the present has been lightly touched in my discourse by the way of summary, but shall be stated should the Lord permit to the best of my power with the proof from the scriptures for concerning the divine and holy mysteries of the faith, not even a casual statement must be delivered without the holy scriptures. Nor must we be drawn aside by mere plausibility and artifices of speech even to me, who tell thee these things, give not absolute credence, unless thou receive the proof of the things which I announce from the divine scriptures. For this salvation which we believe depends not on ingenious reasoning, but on demonstration of the holy scriptures. So that was from Cyril of, Alex, uh, of Jerusalem's Catechetical Lectures. Lecture 417. Then he goes on and says, After, let us inquire for what cause Jesus came down. Now mind not my argumentations, for perhaps thou mayest be misled, but unless thou receive testimony of the prophets on each matter, believe not what I say, unless thou learn from the Holy Scriptures concerning the virgin and the place, the time and the manner received not, not from man. Then he goes on as he says, If then thou seekest the cause of Christ coming, go back to the first book of the scriptures. So that's just him. So we'll go to Basil of Caesarea. It says, The very word and deed should be ratified by the testimony of the Holy Scripture to confirm the good and cause shame to the wicked. Okay. Now we'll go to, okay, it actually continues. 
This is Basil of Caesarea. Concerning the hearers, that those hearers who are instructed in the scriptures should examine what is said by the teachers, receiving that, receiving what is in conformity with the scriptures and rejecting what is opposed to them, and that those who persist in teaching such doctrine should be strictly avoided. So again, he's saying in conformity with the scriptures, um, we have to receive what's in conformity with the scriptures and reject what is opposed to them. So that, that couldn't be much clearer right there. So we'll go to Chrysostom. Uh, let us not therefore carry about the notions of the many, but examine into the facts. For how is it not absurd that in respect to money, indeed, we do not trust, uh, we do not trust to others, but refer this to figures and calculations. But in calculations upon facts, we are lightly drawn aside by the notion of others, and that too. Though we possess an exact balance and a square and rule, rules for all things, the declaration of the divine laws. Wherefore, I exhort and entreat you all, disregard what, what, disregard what this man and that man thinks about these things, and inquire from the scriptures all these things. So I'll read that again, and inquire from the scriptures all these things. And having learned what are the true riches, let us pursue after them, that we may obtain also the eternal good things, which may we all obtain through the grace and love towards men of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ, with whom to the Father and the Holy Spirit be glory, might and honor, now and forever, without end. Amen. So he said, Basically saying, you know, we don't trust other men with money, you know, we do a transaction and we count our change. Uh, we're looking into our bank accounts to see if we were charged right and all that stuff. He's all like, how much more is it to, um, when someone's telling us doctrine, someone's telling us um, something regarding our faith. So we just believe blindly and just accept it, maybe because it's someone that we look up to, someone that we see is in this authority. No, he says, um, inquire from the scriptures, you know, he's saying, um, disregard what this man and that man thinks about these things. So, that's a principle right there. So, I'll go on to Jerome. I'm not going to read, there's so much. I have this book here, it's, it's a lot. So, I'm not going to go through everybody. And Augustine specifically, he has so much. I'm just going to read like one of his. So this is, um, let me see. I'll go to Augustine. I'll read one. It says, I am not bound by the authority of this letter, since I do not hold Cyprian's letters as canonical, but consider them to come from canonical writings. And whatever in them agrees with the authority of the divine scriptures, I accept with praise to him. But what does not agree, I reject with peace to him. Hence, concerning those things you have mentioned, written by him to Jebanius, if you should recite from one canonical book of the apostles or prophets, I would have nothing at all to contradict. But now, since you recite what is not canonical, in that freedom to which the Lord has called us, the view of this man, um... I do not compare my own writings, who, whose mind I love and whose speech I delight, at whose love I marvel, whose martyrdom I venerate, about which he thought otherwise I do not accept. Okay, um, let me just go to that place. He says, he, he's basically saying he agrees with whatever with the authority of the divine scripture, with whatever agrees with the authority of the divine scriptures, that's what he agrees with. And whatever doesn't, he, dis he disagrees with. That's what he's saying with this. And, um, yeah, there's a lot more, uh, which I'm not going to read. They're too much. Too long for the video as well. And I just don't want to, I think later on I'll just do one video based on Augustine, but not this one. I want to read from others. 
Uh, okay, let's go Cyril of Alexandria, Patriarch. Come, let us investigate the divine and sacred scripture and let us seek the solution there. Okay, it says, Gregory the Great, in a silver, the power of speaking, a gold brightness of life or of wisdom is used to be denoted. And because heretics are so filled with pride for the brilliancy of their speaking, that they are not based firmly by an authority of the sacred books. Which books are for speaking like a kind of vein or veins of silver to us? Because from those identical books, we derive the spring and source of our speaking. He recalls them to the pages of sacred authority, that if they have a desire to speak in a true way, they may have, they may from the source draw forth what to say. Okay, let me go on. It says, as if he said in plain words, he that is fitting himself for the words of true preaching, the, the originals of the cases he must of necessity der derive from the sacred page so as to bring round everything that he speaks to a fountain of divine authority and in that set firm to edifice of his own speaking for as we before says oftentimes heretics while they are eager to prop up what is bad of their own broach things which are surely not maintained in the page of the sacred books so here we go again. He's just saying um, whatever's not in the sacred books, which you know is talking about the Bible, is vain. There's nothing there. So um, there we go. There's more, but I'll just leave it there. I'll just leave it there and I'll probably read more stuff from here later on. So, yeah, there we go. Um, God bless you guys. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time.